We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We are going to be discussing how to make slash brainstorm a cover for your beautiful book. So this is something that at one point or other, every author has to think about. If you're in the in um, the process of writing your book and you haven't gotten to this stage, you might be kind of daydreaming about it. And it's a good time to be brainstorming what you're going to want your book cover to look like once you get to that stage. Or maybe you've already finished your book and now you're like, okay, it's crunch time. I have to figure out how am I going to step-by-step step make this book. Today, we're going to just introduce some ideas and some prompts, some things, some tools you can use in your toolkit that's going to help you formulate and figure out what the heck you want this book cover to look like. And we're going to talk about some of our experiences making book covers as well. So grab a notebook and take some notes so that you can refer back to them in your own process because that's what we're going to dig into today. But first, before we get into this discussion, we first have to thank our sponsors, who are you guys. You are the ones who support the show. Keep it going. We so appreciate your support. So if you get value out of The Kate and Abby Show, go to patreon.com slash The Kate and Abby Show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions. Also, when you join the Patreon community, you get to hang out live with, with me and Katie every month. On the last day of each month, we have a live hangout session where we come together, chat about our books, chat about what we're working on, and get to discuss with you, which is just a fun little like hangout session, sort of like joining a uh, writer's group at a coffee shop and right. just having some nice organic chat. So if that sounds like something you're into, you definitely want to join the Patreon so that you can get access to those live streams and help us keep this show alive. So the link is in the description box below, patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show. So let's get into this discussion. Book covers. This is a hot topic. Mm. I think a lot of a lot of writers look for <clears throat> ideas for this on YouTube right. and online because sometimes it's a overwhelming process because yeah. you really want your book cover to grab someone's attention, maybe surprise them a little bit, but you also want it to showcase what your book is going to feel like, what it's going to feel like to step into the world of your story. Um, and you want it to reflect that. Yeah, that's the most important thing is, is the cover reflecting what the book is about? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first things to think right. about is what is your book about? Make some notes. Um, not obviously about the whole plot, but generally what the story is about. Like this is a high fantasy thriller about, you know, the fall of a kingdom let's say. So then, okay, now we're going to be looking at very different types of imagery and colors and fonts than if we were making a cover for a book that was about a meet cute in New York City, right? right. So it's going to be very different vibes, very different images, very different colors and palettes coming to mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, one of the best ways to start like figuring out, okay, what is, what does that imagery look like is to build a vision board mm. for your book. If you don't have one already, then start building one, start putting one together based on just some of the settings and moods and like color palettes, right. like you were saying, and things that feel like your book. Right. Which actually I want to bring, I want to use this as an example. Like, so yes. hold it. If you're watching this right now, you can see me holding up Abby's book, 100 Days of Sunlight. If you're listening, you can look it up later. Um, but on the cover, we've got the title, we have some beautiful imagery, and all these little images have hidden meanings in the yes. book. So this is kind of a textbook example of what we're talking about here. Yeah. So like, why, do you, why don't you talk a little bit about how you did this? Okay. Well, yeah. So like I chose the backdrop color first because I knew I wanted it to be like typography mm -hmm. with flowers and kind of like this chaotic burst of 
sunshiny, happy right. <laughs> imagery. So I did a lot of flowers. Most of them are from public domain images, actually. And um, if, if any of you don't know, this is a this is a lighthearted, contemporary, yes. little bit of a rom com. Not really. It's more of an inspiring, right? Yeah. Upbeat, family oriented. So those are the yeah, types contemporary, of contemporary YA fiction. A little bit of romance some family vibes. So yeah, very much like on the lighthearted end of the spectrum. So I wanted the cover to be happy. I wanted it to mm. be like, you immediately see it, even if you see just the spine, you're like, oh, that looks like a happy book because yellow is such a happy color. So I decided to choose this nice yellow backdrop that would be bright, but not like, you know, highlighter yellow. Right. <laughs> and um, then started deciding like, okay, what are some of the little hidden pictures that I want to bring into this that after you read the book or while you're reading the book, you're thinking, um, you're looking at the cover in a new way and you're like, oh, I see some things that I recognize now, like the yellow Polaroid camera, waffles, the yellow ukulele, um, songbirds, butterflies, laptop, sunglasses. So there's all kinds of like little hidden pictures in this um, book cover and I did the same thing also for the sequel is the Christmas book, Tessa and West are the best Christmas ever. It's kind I also of following did, the same layout. Yeah, sort of the same layout with the um, the, the greenery and like the, the plant <clears throat> life vibe, but mixing in some of the elements of the book. So that was one of the things that when I first started brainstorming this book cover, I was like, okay, I want to bring those elements into it, but I also want the whole picture to immediately give you a feeling, mm, you know? Yes. So it's not like, oh, I have to get out my magnifying glass to get meaning out of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't necessarily want that. It you gives want... you, if you don't know what the story about, it gives you an immediate vibe of right. what to expect from the story. So yes. you're looking at this and you're thinking this is going to be a fun contemporary. It's yeah. going to be lighthearted. Maybe there's going to be some romance. Maybe there's going to be, it's going to be upbeat. It's right. going to be a fun experience to read this. It's going to be happy. It's going to be lighthearted mm -hmm. because we can see from the images, the butterflies, the flowers, the yellow, the font. The yeah. font is also coming into play here, how it's like big and clean and bright. Mm. So yeah. like we have a lot of things telling us like what the book is going to be about. And then if we know the story, we're like, oh, and that's the ukulele. Oh, and that's the camera. And that's the, the whatever, like all the different yeah. little things, the waffles, whatever. Right. We know what those things are. So to have like that's cool because you have these multi layers. Mm. You don't have to have it be like a hidden pictures. This is just like an example of something that is pulling from the story in really fun and creative ways. Similarly, yeah, like you do that with your books. Right. Too. So similarly with like the cover for the third book of my series Resurgence, I went with a double exposure theme for the entire series because I liked the metaphysical vibe of double exposure. So again, my book is an urban fantasy, has some thriller elements, has some paranormal elements. So having those like more metaphysical things at play in the paranormal aspects, I'm like double exposure feels cool. Yeah. So we have like, okay, we have the two people, the two main characters. We have one dissolving into like a forest, the other dissolving into a ruined city, both of which are really important to the book. Those are both the two main settings at play within this story, mm -hmm. juxtaposed against each other. But even if we don't know that, even if we just saw this on a shelf and we didn't know what the book was about, we would get the feeling of this is obviously some romance, obviously some urban fantasy vibes, right. and maybe something metaphysical going on here. Yeah. And even like the color palette with the black and white and the red immediately speaks to me as like this is more intense right but and it has like maybe some thriller vibes maybe right. some uh you know some more like suspense vibes like mm. red is a very suspenseful color especially paired with black and white um and you can like kind of study this when you look at other book covers yeah and in, in either in a bookstore or you know online on pinterest whatever like study like what genres use these colors and <laughs> is it is it mostly um you know is it the genre that you're writing and making right. your book cover is it like completely opposite that and if so then it might be giving your potential reader the wrong first impression of what right. your book is so like the color palette is a big thing right, right. And, and like and you can walk through a bookstore <clears throat> fun game walk through a bookstore or a library 
and look at a book cover and try to guess what genre it is before you even pick it up and open it to see what genre it is. Right. Not that you have to work exactly within the, that structure because me and Abby are all for, you know, go think outside of the box, yes. break, break rules, rules, you know, get messy with it, just do your thing. But you also don't want it to look like if, if 100 Days of Sunlight was black and white and red and had like this font, it <laughs> definitely wouldn't, you would think, okay, that, I don't know, I'm not sure what that is. So you yeah. do want the cover of your book through the font, through the color scheme, through the imagery to be accurately giving your reader a quick taste of what your genre, the mood, the framework of your story is going to be like. Right. Because that might be what gets them to pick it up and um, open the covers. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so like I was saying before about the um, gathering different uh, imagery to kind of emphasize the vibe of your story, whether you're building a Pinterest board or just a vision board or just collecting pictures from the internet or just collecting book covers that you like. I have separate Pinterest boards for like all of these things. I have a separate Pinterest board for book covers and then boards within that board of like different genres and different projects that I maybe want to just look at those covers to get the mood of them in my mind. I'm not copying them for sure. You don't want to copy anybody's book cover. Um, but you do want to draw inspiration from like, okay, what is the thing that draws my eye to that? Right. And can I find a way to make that ingredient my own with my own unique art right. on my cover? Um, but what like specifically draws your attention in is an, a really important thing right. to think about even more so than like you know top five most popular fantasy books and then I'm just gonna like sort of come up with a mixture of all five of those put together like that might not work for you because it might not even attract you personally to the cover right. you know like I, I would be more inclined to advise you to like go with what you are instinctively drawn to mm -hmm. what what instinctively attracts your eye to a specific book right. when you are in a bookstore or in a library you know like you're saying yeah. a good a good test of that is to just walk around a bookstore and like see what catches your eye mm -hmm. in a cover yeah because you want it to really express you and as avi and i know from experience it can be a really fun experience to see your book and be like, oh, it's so pretty. I love the way this looks. This makes me so happy to look at it, so happy to pick it up. You want to have that feeling. You don't want right. to feel like, I don't really like this, but I'm just trying to fit a genre. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. can, you can work with things like color and font choices to really communicate the mood of the story, but then really dig into what attracts you to a book, like Abby's right. saying. What is it that draws you to a book? What makes you want to pick up a book off the shelf? and try to tie those things into what you're doing. And one of the things I love to do too, and I'm actually doing this for a project that I finished over the summer, is I mess around in Canva making book covers because Canva has all kinds of layouts, all kinds of designs that you can browse. And this isn't sponsored by them, but I do, I love playing around in there and just trying different things because even if you don't end up making your book cover yourself, it can give you a really good idea of like, oh, I really like this this looks cool and or if I changed this and then you can come up with like five or six or seven different covers mm -hmm. and then choose like which one draws me in the most and if you end up working with a cover designer it's great to be able to send them mock-ups like hey I want it to basically look like this because right. you're going to do your cover designer a huge favor by giving them as much information up front as you possibly can and make sure it's going to look the way you want it to look and not completely off track from what you are envisaging. Right. So yeah, that can be really helpful. That's really helpful to have so, more yeah. source material rather than less yes. to work from. Right, so coming up with your own mock-ups <clears throat> and it's kind of the same as um, doing vision boards and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And Abby designed her own cover for 100 Days of Sunlight. I designed the cover for the first book in the Sparrow series. So we both have experience of like collectively making our own book covers as well as working with other people to make book covers. Mm -hmm. And it can be really helpful to already have in your mind, regardless of what route you're taking, of really getting a good idea of what you want that book cover to look like before you start working with someone else. 
or if you're not sure you're making it yourself, but you're not sure what you want, try a bunch of different things and then see what really resonates with you. Yeah. Because you'll know when you hit on something that you really like, it will be that moment of it clicks and you really are like, oh, this is really cool. I like this. This feels like it fits the mood of the story. I like the colors. I like the imagery, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You can kind of make note of what those things are for you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a great sense of direction to head in. Um, and also, like we were saying earlier, don't be afraid to break the rules that you see with, you know, genre expectations and things, expectations and things like that. Like we were saying about, you know, looking at the top, whatever books in a certain genre and feeling like, oh, it has to look something like that. Or, you know, I can just kind of use that as a template for my book cover. Like, don't be afraid to do something different mm. that hasn't really been seen before. Not to the extent where you are confusing your potential reader and making them like wonder what genre is this? This looks strange. I've never seen anything like this. You know, what, what am I looking at right now? <laughs> like, you still wanna keep in mind all those aspects that we talked about, like, you know, what atmosphere do you want to present? What feeling do you want to give somebody? Right. Do they immediately look at your book cover and have a certain feeling? Or do they get a certain vibe from it? Like, I know this is going to be lighthearted. I know this is going to be intense. I know this is going to be cozy or thoughtful, thought provoking, or is it going to be like, you know, more suspenseful and, or something like fantasy might be a completely different aesthetic, but you have these options to play with and you have, you know, you don't have to necessarily color inside the lines only, right. but as you venture outside those lines and you, you know, try new things, do keep in mind that you have a specific prospect in mind. Like you have a certain type of reader who is looking for a book like right. this, and so when they are browsing through books, what's going to appeal to them? And usually right. it's you, you know, usually mm -hmm. you write the books you want right. to read. So it's yeah, pretty so going easy back to, to like, that out. what would make me want to pick that up? Yeah. What would make me realize that that's a book I want to pick up? Right. <laughs> yeah. And you can even brainstorm this with other people as well, like other writers or just other people, you know, who aren't even writers. Maybe they're just readers and you can ask them like, what is it that appeals to you about a book or walk through a bookstore with them and see what they naturally gravitate towards. Um, because sometimes it can be nice to see like someone else's perspective on it yeah. um, and see, especially if they read the genre that you're writing and see like, okay, what, what are the aspects of that? If, they, if you see them go pick up a book, ask them like, okay, what is, what is it that appealed to you about this cover? You know, was it, the colors? Was it the subjects? Was it, um, you know, the fact that it's maybe photography or maybe artwork and illustrations? Um, because when it comes to breaking the mold and doing something different, it's also about like, not so much like breaking the rules to the point where you're confusing people, but, but doing something that's different or not quite the same as we've seen before. Cause I feel like the book cover market has become like really oversaturated with certain trends. Mm. Um, not that these trends are bad because they work obviously to some degree, but then once they become really popular after a certain period of time, it's like every book looks like this. Right. You know, like I can think off the top of my head, like one of the trends is like in contemporary romance, like the really, um, really flat like character art that is mm -hmm. like the faceless characters. Right. <laughs> Sometimes they just have eyebrows. Um, and I actually like this style artwork. It's pretty cool. And if if used properly, it can look really, really suitable for your book. But it's also good to consider the fact that there are lots of books using this art style now. So maybe ask yourself if you want to use this art style for your book, how can I add something different to my book cover? on top of using the faceless character art that makes it a little bit different, a little bit unique, right. a little bit like, oh, that's different. I haven't seen that done yet before. Right. You know? Something that might surprise your potential reader and right. make them more intrigued by it because it doesn't look like just everything else that's out there. Yeah, and that's another thing you can do walking through a bookstore. Again, <laughs> Abby and I have lots of like geeking out in bookstores. Yeah. Um, 
noticing what book covers really jump out to you, regardless of what genre they're in, where you're like, oh, wow, that's a really cool book cover that makes me instantly want to pick that up and see what it's about. Take note of what exactly is it when you have it in your hand. What is it that first drew you in? Was it the imagery? Was it the composition? Was it the colors? Was it something else? So take note of what those things are mm. to help yourself understand what is it that really jumps off of a shelf that's highly saturated with many book covers because that's okay. something to think about is whether you're in a physical store space or in an online space your book is going to always be alongside lots of other imagery so let's say it's in it's in a, a on a page or on a shelf full of very similar in imagery hmm. like fantasy can tend to look very similar to each right. other especially so thinking about how you can make it clear that your book is fantasy or high fantasy, urban fantasy, whatever it is, but also make it a bit different so that mm. it jumps out to someone. It doesn't just blend in with everything else. Yeah. So these are little things, kind of little mental exercises you can put yourself through to yeah. ask yourself these questions like, okay, how, what do I want to do to, to make it clear that this is fantasy, but what do I want to do to make it break the stand mold, out, stand yeah, out? Pop out? Yeah. And that's something that I thought of when I was designing hundred years of sunlight, because when it would show up on a page with, you know, other books of its genre, or even just other contemporary books or in the categories on Amazon, or even on NetGalley, when I was going through the ARC period, it was like the only book that was yellow. Wow. Like the only yellow book cover and yellow is uh, not a very popular color for a lot of books. Like if you look at anybody's like bookstagram or anything, usually their yellow shelf is if they do like organized by color, the yellow shelf is always like the smallest. Wow, that's it's really, just really, I didn't yeah, know there's that. just not a that's lot of books. Like blue is a huge color, um, black for fantasy, like any dark color for fantasy. There's a lot of books. Like if you're just looking at the spines. Um, blue is very popular for like contemporary and YA fiction, um, any pastel color, but not a lot of yellow. Well, so yeah, as I was doing, I was also thinking like, I know that is going to just pop. That's going to stand out from every other book on the page with it. So, you know, like you're saying about, you know, what's that one ingredient that you can add that's like different, Yeah. but still keeping the recipe um, you know, somewhat the same so that right. they know what to expect. But then there's like, there's a little bit of special sauce on top. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and like that can come from even small touches. It can come mm. from colors and fonts. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing, like Abby's saying, how she noticed that, you know, the different amounts of books on the bookshelves that were sorted by color. You can look at that, look at, yeah. okay, what are the most popular colors? What are some of the colors that are like a little more fringe or whatever? And, yeah. and see if you can change it up. See if you can make something new. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. And, and like you're saying, looking at books in a bookstore, like you and I always do, we, we go around and like, uh, critique them. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all of them, critique them and be like, uh, see that, that looks wrong. Why did they do that? Or like, oh, I really like this aspect. Like if you want to do this with a friend, it's even more fun. But yes. even if you do it by yourself, like analyze each one, like, okay, what is it that grabbed me? Is it the font? Is it the colors? Is it the composition of maybe the photograph or the way that things are layered? Um, is there something that catches you first and then something that you notice later? That's mm -hmm. one thing that I personally really love in book covers. And that's kind of what I was describing here with, with the hundred days of sunlight. Cause you're immediately caught by like the burst of color and, and flowers, but then you start to look deeper and you notice like, Oh, I didn't notice, you know, the sunglasses, the Polaroid. I even did this with my latest book, the other world, which at first glance looks like a sort of layered, uh, landscape of, you know, the ocean, the islands, a plane flying away, and the lighthouse in the foreground. But I also wanted there to be something that you see when you open the book that you didn't necessarily see when you first picked it up, and that is the outline of the butterfly that spans the open book. And it's quite subtle, but I, as, I was just, as I was brainstorming this cover, I was thinking, you know, I really want there to be some sort of hidden picture element that's like, as you look at it longer, you're like, wait, is that, is that, 
oh my gosh, it is. And then you just get something else out of it, something extra, something. Yeah, I love more. this book cover. This book cover is so magical. Yes, yeah. And when I was choosing the, um, thank you, <laughs> I was choosing the color palette for this, I, I knew I wanted indigo to be a big color in it mm. because my main character, Orga's favorite color is indigo. But I also wanted like the softer, sort of whimsical, romantic tones of the sunset um, to break up that dark uh, atmosphere. Right. But have and sort like, of a magical vibe. Right. <laughs> you know? And how you also have like the little compass in the middle of the O yes. because that's like kind of like ocean nautical. Right. Also has to yeah. do with aviation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it also has to do with direction and characters finding their direction, which right. calls upon like the more emotional side of the story. So that's another yeah. thing you can do. Like Abby was just mentioning, this is characters' favorite colors. Pull on things that are emotional for the characters. Yeah. What are things or symbols or colors that are important to them? What are some things that speak to the emotional side of the story? And you can actually weave those things into the cover itself. Yeah. which I think makes it even more compelling. Yeah, I agree, 100%. It's, it's super fun, and let it be a fun, explorative adventure. Let it be um, something that you're not too worried about, because the thing with cover art is, especially when you're making your own mock-ups and you're just, like, experimenting, is you can just keep trying. Yeah. If, you, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Right. And even if you just want to try a few different options first, and you're like, hmm, I'm not sure, maybe I want illustrations. Maybe I want um, a photograph. Maybe I want my characters and to be able to see their faces. Maybe I don't want to see their faces. Maybe I just want their eyebrows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever the case may be. But like try different options. And also share them with like friends and family. Yeah. That can be a fun thing. Yeah. Send like three covers and be like, I, which one would you be most likely to pick up and mm -hmm. read and see what they say? So that can be fun too to see, you know, which one jumps out the most. Right. Very good point. So hopefully you took some notes listening to this discussion. Let's just recap our points real quick. First things first, make, what is your book about? Make some notes, make some um, just initial sketches, either with words or actual sketches <laughs> with the themes, the mood of your story. What sort of color palette do you want to carry over into the cover? What atmosphere do you want to bring your potential reader into? And these vibes can be as abstract as light, dark, cozy, thoughtful, intense, suspenseful, or they can be something more concrete, like the actual setting that your book takes place in. Um, what fonts do you find personally catch your eye? Also create a vision board. So starting with a maybe a Pinterest board and branching out with different book covers you like and different um, aesthetics that match your story to really build that mood, build that world and draw inspiration from that. And make mock book covers on Canva. So this doesn't have to be the official end, end game cover. This is just for your own inspiration and your own brainstorming process. Um, whether you use Canva or another uh, software, just play around, see what you come up with. And finally, don't feel like you have to stay fully inside the lines, color outside the lines a bit, but make sure that you are also promising to your reader the kind of story that you have written in the pages of this book and deliver this this accurate mood, right, and genre of your story, but don't be afraid to break the mold a little bit and do something unexpected to spice it up. So join the discussion, guys. We would love to hear from you. We wanna know what you think about book covers. What is it that attracts you to a book cover? What makes you stop in your tracks in a bookstore and pick up a book and start paging through it because the cover caught your eye? Comment below and tell us. We would love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Also smash that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss another episode of the podcast. And if you're listening on an audio platform, feel free to give us a nice rating. We always appreciate those. Again, thank you to our patrons who make this show possible. Thank you for your support and love. If you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show. Until next time, stay stoked and rock on.